This is the Aquafan AQ2. It's an atmospheric water condenser, which is a fancy way of saying a dehumidifier. Now, to be fair, it is a bit more advanced than that, and we'll get into that. But the basic idea is that you can pop this thing down anywhere, and it will just create fresh water for you. Now, today we're going to take a look at this one here, and I actually purchased this myself about three months ago to see if it would live up to the hype. I've also been collecting data the entire time about the production of the water and how much energy it takes using my Sense energy monitor. Now, some of you will remember that at my old house, I had a similar system that sat on my roof and it made water out of air and plumbed it directly into my sink. This isn't that. Those were a sort of whole house system. This is more of a point solution, something you just put in a single point that you want water to. It can generate or reportedly generate enough water for a family of four like mine, but as we get into the data, you'll see that it doesn't always work exactly as you may want it to. So here in my new house, I wanted a similar system to what I had before with that whole house system. And when I found this company at a conference selling these, I was really interested and bought one right there on the spot. The tech here is pretty simple. It's basically like a dehumidifier, but in a dehumidifier, the water coming out of that isn't really ready to drink. So it's kind of like that, but then it also has a six stage reverse osmosis system and includes a UV light to sterilize the water as it's being dispensed. That's what this blue light is here. Now, if you're the do it yourself type, you probably already are picturing a way to do this with stuff you could find at Home Depot and you'd probably be successful. But of course it wouldn't be as neatly packaged as this and it wouldn't have this little computer built in that tells you exactly the humidity level, how much usage there is or anything else about the system itself. I have had a couple issues with this and that little device there does connect back to their kind of network operation center where they can troubleshoot things and look at more detailed stuff as to what's going on. So DIY crowd, you can do this on your own for sure. Go ahead and let me know all the recipe of how you do that down below. But for the rest of us, this is a really great little package that you literally just plug in and it works. And that really was the question I had when I first looked at this thing and decided to buy it was, does this actually work? I know I had something similar at my house, but how does this stand up? And is it something that if you don't have access to clean water in your home, you could use, right? Most of us have that, but some of us don't. And so is this a solution for them or where does this really fit? That's what I sought out to answer when I bought this and how I've been testing it over the past few months. So first let's start with the cost. I spent about $2,000 to have this. It was sort of a discount there at the uh, conference I bought it from. And the idea is that it will be making three gallons of water a day and they promise one gallon per kilowatt hour of energy. So far, it's produced 90 liters or about 24 gallons of water, which comes out to about 0.25 gallons per day. And that's not nearly living up to what they say, but we'll get into why that might be in a second. I also hooked it up to the smart meter, which allows me to see the exact amount of energy this device itself consumes. This is really cool and it's all powered by my Sense Home Energy Monitor. And so to date, this thing has consumed 244 kilowatt hours of electricity to make those 24 gallons of water. So if you add in the 42 cents per kilowatt hour average for us here in San Diego, yes, I know that's very high and I have a whole series coming out on how to mitigate that and you know reduce your cost of electricity. But if you bring that in, what I'm paying right now, it comes out to about $4.55 per gallon. That is 10 times more expensive than their claim of one kilowatt hour per gallon, which for me would be just about 42 cents. So why is it doing this? Why isn't it delivering on what they promise on the website? Let me add some color to that because I think I have an idea. When we first got the unit, we put it in the garage and in there it had a hard time running. The ideal situation is that it needs humidity above 25% and the temperature to be above 60. I'm in San Diego, really mild climate. You'd think that would be it all year round, but not exactly the case. We've had sort of a colder winter and because of the coldness, it also is dry. So often it's below 60 at certain times of the day and humidity has dropped all the way down to the single digits at, at certain times. So the first couple of weeks I had this, this thing really did nothing. It was just sitting in my garage, completely inactive. Uh, I was texting with the team, like, what's going on? What's going on? They're in California too. And they're like, yeah, same thing here. So if you live in a dry area or an area that gets cold and you want to put this somewhere like your garage that isn't heated, you might not have the best experience. So during that time, what's happening is it's consuming energy, trying to do stuff, but it's just not really producing much. And I think that's a big reason why I didn't get the results that they're hoping for, their kind of ideal scenario of that one kilowatt hour per gallon. 
And on top of that, they want you to cycle it two to three times before you use it, right? So you have to fill it up all the way to where it stops running and then just drain that water out before you drink it. And they want to do that two to three times. So what that means is you're spending over $2,000 for this thing and you get it to your house, you plug it in. And in my case, it was two to three weeks before I could even really use it, right? It was just sitting there consuming energy, making water, but not something I could drink. So that's kind of a, a, a bad startup experience, right? That's not what you want your customer to get. As soon as they get this thing, they're all excited about it and you gotta wait. I mean, my kids were literally dying to try this water because they remember the water from the old house. And so that was a bummer. But once we brought it into the house, instead of in the garage, it really started to work a lot better. The temperature is almost always above 60 degrees. You know, we don't really like to get that cold here. Uh, but the humidity isn't always above 25%. In fact, it is a dehumidifier. And so as it's running, it's kind of defeating itself, right? Because at some point, it will reduce the humidity in the room below its own operating standard, meaning it can't run. So we're running out of water here at the house with it running, even though the temperature and the conditions are better, it's still because of the humidity setting, not really able to keep up with a family of four. Now I know that sounds all bad, but the reality is I really like this thing. I think it is really cool. I believe in this technology and I think it does have a couple of good use cases. So hear me out. For example, let's say you have a room that doesn't have water plumbed into it, but you want to add a drinking fountain uh, somewhere to get water. Well, this does that. You literally just pop it in there and plug it in and let it run. Now, it is somewhat noisy, I will say, but once you get it level, there were all these kind of tricks I had to figure out about balancing it and everything to where it's kind of perfectly running. And it's not loud, but you definitely notice it's running in the room. So if you have it in a media room, you might want to put it in standby mode if you're watching a movie, something like that. Point being, it's really cool that you can just pop this thing in anywhere where you want water, say an office or something like that, and you don't have to do anything else except feed it electricity. I really like that. And if you know home renovations, adding a water spigot somewhere could be a huge endeavor. It's not really worth it. So for this to solve for that one use case, I think it works really well and it can serve you if you have those kind of needs. Now, of course, there's the more kind of serious side of this. This is all sort of bougie, right? We're all like, oh yeah, I need extra water in my, my one room, whatever. But what if you live somewhere like Jackson, Mississippi, the, the capital city of Mississippi, and there are 150,000 people there that don't have access to clean drinking water right now. They've been on boil notices for months and a new report came out saying that it could be decades before that is solved. This kind of a system in that scenario could really honestly be a lifesaver. You know, you're not getting bottled water anymore. You literally just pop one, two of these things in there. I know they're expensive, but honestly, it's gonna save you such a headache and you're always gonna have fresh water. So in those cases, absolutely, I think this thing totally makes sense. Know though that you may not wanna rely on it wholly because if the temperature drops or it's not humid enough, it stops working. So that's really the big flaw that I see in it as of right now. But as I said, it's really early in Aquafant's development. This is literally one of the first units. You know, I, I was there right at their first sh trade show. I bought one that day. It came on the very first shipment. So over time, this thing's gonna get software updates. They're gonna have design improvements and all the versions down the road, I think can be better and better to where this really can become sort of a indispensable item for most people that have a house. Now, of course, Aquafant isn't the only game in town though. And as I mentioned, I had a whole house system like this at my previous home. And if you want to see how that one worked, you have to go check out this video right here. It is really compelling. And if you're interested in this at all, you have to go watch this video right now. Now that's it for this one, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you back here next time.